Hi, Trevor. How are you? Oh, hi, Lori. I'm fine. How are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for joining us on the Art Fest online chat. And uh, I have with me here Trevor Owen, First Nations artist, and I'm Lori McDonald from uh, Art Fest, and I'm your host today. So, Trevor, uh, thanks for coming on and talking about your artwork. I'm looking forward to sharing things with our audience. You're a First Nations artist, and you're from the, the Mi'kmaq tradition, I believe, the First Nations tradition. What does that, what does that mean, really? The Mi'kmaq? Mi'kmaq. Um, yeah, my father's a Mi'kmaq from Nova Scotia, uh, Chapel Island First Nation. It's also known as the Potlatak First Nation. Uh, it's off the east coast of Nova Scotia, so a lot of the, the native artists there did the Petro, petroglyphs, petroglyphs, I guess they're called. Yeah, so what are petroglyphs exactly? Uh, like they did the carving on rock back in uh, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. Okay, so is that different than pictographs or petroglyphs and pictographs? Are they the same thing then or are they paintings or like, I, I know I've seen pictures with, it looks like they're actually almost like a dye or something or a paint rather than a carving or is it? Is it? Uh, yes, mo most of the native uh, Mi'kmaq were in, in rock and some of them were uh, like on wood. Oh, I see. Okay. So they're, they're images. And I know that, you know, the First Nations tradition is very based in story and tradition, like stories. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cause they, didn't, they didn't have uh, written, it, it's all like uh, verbal through the drawings, how they share their memory, their stories and that. With, I mean, you see the imagery. For you, like that's a First Nations artist, so you understand you understand the tradition and what the images mean. You know, for someone like myself, I don't really, I'm not really that familiar with, you know, what they might mean. There's a whole history behind each uh, graphic image, I guess. Oh yes, exactly. You have passed down from the elders, uh, yeah, just so they can have a history. Is it like a st like they're like stories, I guess, and so. Oh yeah, that's what it is. Mostly all storytelling, yes. Yeah. Right, and that's basically how, you know, th you learn your teachings as well, I guess. And as growing up, you learn stories and things you value and things you love and things that you, you treasure, I guess, come from those stories. Oh, yes, for sure. So your work, your work you know, I was reading through your information and you're a Woodlands artist. Uh, yes, actually, yeah. that's what I was inspired by from like Norvell Merceau and Jackson Birdie and ones from around uh, the Woodlands area here, in like Ontario area, where I live presently. I like them, for their colors are really bright, like bold lines are really colorful, I, I like that. That's beautiful. When it's a Woodlands artist, is, what does that exactly mean when you say you're a Woodlands artist? Is it is it just about the color? Oh no, it's just like, uh, it's like uh, Ojibwe, Mohawk, um, Woodlands, like different tribes from this area, like the Woodlands. So it's like more into uh, natives within the uh, Ontario area, Manitoba, within in Canada and Ontario here, Southern Ontario and Northern mostly. Okay, so is it is it a lot to do with the imagery then, like the types of things that you actually paint? Oh, yeah, I just love the, the abstract art, the way it like kind of tells the story when you look at the, the painting. I just like the bright colors. That's what I love. <laughs> well, I was in your in the one painting that you have in the, is called Within the Morning Sun. Yes, that's the new one I just finished uh, actually just recently this month, uh, 2020 here. Yep. The meaning for that one is symbolizing a sign of uh, transformation and change with uh, good luck and happiness and um, mature leadership through understanding and wisdom for everyone to be truly equal. Yeah, so I, in that piece, what is the butterfly? Is that what symbolizes transformation? Yes, yeah, the butterfly symbolizes transformation and uh, yeah, the dragonfly just uh, symbolizes transformation too and change and maturity. Um, uh, the hummingbird is good luck and it's like a healer and it's a joy and love. And uh, the bee is like honesty, good luck, and cougar is like leadership and taking charge and pride and wisdom. So they're all kind of like like the transformation of the butterfly and like the dragonfly in that. They transform and change. Yeah, it's beautiful. And then this, when you call it within the morning sun, what does that title mean to you? It's just like the way that, uh, you know, in the morning when the sun shines on everything, like grow and everything to be new. So I was just, I wanted this painting to just, you know, for everybody to be equal and just try and symbolize, uh, trying to put the, 
different animals, the insects and that, uh, symbolizing change and like, you know, wisdom, change, good luck, just uh, inspirational. And uh, yeah, I, just, I like all the colors there that I put into that one. Yeah, it's beautiful. And how big is that painting? That's uh, 16 by 20. Okay. Yeah. Nice size. Yeah, so I, and I know that you, you know, with your storytelling as well, I mean, I, and the one piece is called um, Beyond Mother Earth. That's a bear, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, but uh, there's a turtle in there too. What, what is yep. going on in that story with that one? Yeah, that one, uh, yeah, there's actually, there, you can see that I put three faces I hid, in, I hid, sorry, in the leg of the bear. Okay. And yeah, that one's just beyond our Mother Earth and universe. It's uh, reaching out to the stars and to be one with the great spirit creator. So I just wanted to make it like, I don't know, I thought I'd just try and do something with like uh, the universe or just something outside of uh, the world and just try and, you know, just make it like everything can like transcend or like spread out, kind of spread far away. Kind of. <laughs> it's sort of connecting with the great creator in a way. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's just kind of, I just wanted to make it radiate. Just, that was a little tough there. <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't notice the fir at first, you know, the faces and the legs. It's, an, I mean, that's the thing that's so interesting about your work because you look at it, you think, oh, it's a bear, right? And then you're like, wait a second, no, there's, a, <laughs> no, there's way more to the piece, and just keep discovering things. And it almost looks like that is it a fish or something that's going up? Yes, exactly. Yep. The, yeah, I try and hide stuff in some of my paintings. There's quite a few you'll notice. You'll see a lot of hidden stuff there. The spirit wolves is one. It's two wolves together making one face. You've seen that one, that painting where black and red and yellow. The spirit wolf is one. And uh, it's, uh, my chief was another one there. I, that was for my, uh, well, uh, the late uh, grand chief Donald Marshall Sr. He was the okay. grand chief for, uh, from 67 to 91, I think. That's my grandmother's cousin. So I'm related to my grandma, Mary Marshall. She's related to uh, Donald Marshall Sr. and Jr. Okay. The spirit. Yeah. Yeah. In Nova Scotia. Yeah, and I know even like with the one, the painting that the herons and the loons together. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting one because it almost looks like the heron, like this is my interpretation, but I, I'm just going to say if I look at it and I say, it's almost like the loon is a reflection of the heron. So what is the relationship there with the heron and the loon? It looks very playful. Like what's going yeah. on? Yeah, well, they actually kind of mean the same kind of, they, they symbolize strength, the family, and they're both with patience and peace. And that's why I kind of put them together. So like in the saying there that I wrote for the title for that one, the herring and the moon, the water dance. Yeah, that's how they're creating like a, a wonderful, like uh, harmonizing dance together. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, and the ripples that they're creating, with it, it's like they're creating um, a <laughs> yeah. piece of artwork with their ripples. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I just try and do everything different. I don't know, like a lot of my paintings, you'll notice they're not like all of the same style. I kind of make everything kind of, I try and make them all different and unique. Yeah, you do have that because there's, there's a lot of variety um, yeah. with the with with the uh, rich storytelling within, within the pieces. That's what's sort of weaves them all together and keeps them all together there. So yeah, so you, you were doing mainly shows with your artwork, and then you you do travel. What tell me a bit about your art, your art, how you sell your work? Okay, well, it first started out um, in like 2004. It was like a hobby, but I always was into native art. I liked the native art and culture. And uh, like back in high school, I would just make uh, native stuff out of like clay. I'd make uh, pillows, shirts, and just drawings and that. But I didn't really uh, pursue it. Till around 2004 and then I, it was like a hobby I started doing paintings and then by 2010 I had 12 paintings so I designed a, a native art calendar so oh. that's what I did in 2010 and 11 and then now I'm up at over 20 paintings and and I did a coloring book yeah yeah so yeah tell me about the coloring book is it just for is it for kids for adults or for anybody Oh yeah, I try and make it from all age groups from like the different difficulty levels and that. So it's like, well not from uh, youth, like uh, yeah, that one, um, that one I also, um, for each calendar sold, I'm gonna donate a portion of uh, the funds to the Gord Downey Channing Wenjack Fund. Okay. 
How many? Yeah, that one I designed like uh, at home. I actually just uh, designed it all and that on the computer to help with my girlfriend, and then uh, we got them printed. Well, it's really nice to have that because then you can really dive into the into the detail of the illustrations and and are there also you have you know hidden images in there too to discover right oh yeah yep <laughs> yeah very nice thank you <clears throat> so um i also see that you you mean you've not just doing paintings but you also have um dream catchers and oh I, yeah I mean, Dreamcatcher has been around for a while. And I understand that, but tell me what the what's the real story behind the Dreamcatcher? Like, from your perspective, what does this Dreamcatcher mean? Uh, well, I, first of all, like for the Dreamcatchers, there they're all authentic. I make them all from um, deer hide. Then there'll be various like from bone, shell, stone, some metal beads, uh, sinew, and uh, feathers, duck, goose, and different variety of feathers, and. Uh, uh, yeah, the meaning actually, the native meaning for uh, for the dreamcatcher is uh, it goes like uh, the legend goes: the dreamcatcher was used by the Woodlands Indians to hang the in their lot in the lodge near the bedroom window, and it was used to catch all the dreams, good or bad. And the good dreams were caught in the webbing, finding their way to the center, would filter down into the feathers to help be to be held and um, dreamt another night the bad dreams could uh would be caught in the webbing and would stay there to be burned off in the morning light that's the meaning for uh the dream catcher to the woodland native artist oh oh yeah. really i didn't know that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah i do i do uh bracelets not so much lately but i did a lot i made a lot of uh, authentic bracelets dream catchers and uh, necklaces and stuff like that so with the bracelets, I mean, it's a beautiful bracelet with, uh, it's, it's, at, it's bone, is that what it, or? Uh, yes, a lot of them are like from, the black would be like um, a horn, and then the bone would be different types of stone. Then I also also have like different, um, like, like semi-precious stones too that are inside there. There's all different kinds, I got them all mixed. <laughs> yeah, so as there, <clears throat> I know that um, they're quite, they're quite decorative. Do they, are they used for just as jewelry? Do they, or are they used in ceremony or are they used for special occasions? Like, is there some other, is there a richer meaning there for, about the, with the bracelets you, do, you make? Oh yeah, well, uh, for, um, to wear, and then also um, for like, when, like powwows and you dress, get dressed up, you can wear um, the bracelets too. And they're just, uh, yeah, they're just, I, I just love the way that, just use the natural um, products to make them. Well, that natural products feel so nice on your skin, don't they? Oh yeah, the deer. Yeah, it's deer hide or moose hide. Yeah, very even though even with the the smoothness of the stone and the and the antler, it's just such a nice feel. Rather than you know, I don't know, you know, plastic beads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It does. It just has a different feel to it. It feels some really substantial. It almost feels like too, like you're protected in a way. It's almost like you know. Oh don't... yeah, exactly. It just feels. It just feels <laughs> nice to wear them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, you've been to the art fest uh, First Nations Pavilion a couple of years. I think it was a couple of years ago you came. Uh yes, 2017. Yes. Yeah. And uh, what a great experience it was for you know, you know, for all the visitors that came to see the pavilion and art for the artists that attended for myself personally too i just loved it and it's been it's exciting to see it you know growing and changing and evolving and it's i'm sad that we're not there in person this year um but uh, david miracles uh stepped up and he's gonna do a one-hour show on july 4th oh yeah yeah right. Specifically, if, if for, you know First Nations and all, and you know artists and music and stories, and I mean he's got some really neat things planned. We're still, it's still uh, all being put together right now, but it'll be on right after our our like we'll have the one hour art fest show at two o'clock, and then at three o'clock we'll we'll switch over to David's uh, live stream on Facebook. Uh 
Oh. Awesome. Yeah, that, that uh, Native Pavilion, was, that was awesome. That was the first time I ever was at something so big, like the big tent and all, like famous Native artists all under one tent. I used to go, I've been to lots of many powwows and um, different shows, like lots, like like over a dozen at least. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that one was awesome. And Jay is just so funny on his, on the microphone there when he's telling his jokes and yeah, the first time I met Jay was at uh, Saint Marie, Saint Marie among the Hurons. And, oh. Uh, um, yeah, he he was going there too with uh, Helena, and I met them there, and he came up to my tent and was talking to me, and yeah, he, he's he's funny. He's yeah, a great guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it's just so, it's so sad that he's left us here. You know, that I'm glad, I'm glad that David, you know, can carry on his vision and his dream because you know jay it was it was so unique what his concept was and it was just that we ended up coming together because i know uh, i met him and helena at the distillery district because helena was one of our exhibitors oh, yeah. met jay and he was right away he's just you just felt you just love the guy he was just such <laughs> warm and friendly helpful like he's like you ever need anything from me i can just you call me ever so i when i was trying to I was trying to, you know, bring in First Nations artists for a few years and I was having no luck at all. And I talked to some people and nothing ever worked. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to call Jay. I remember meeting him at the distillery district. So I called him up and right away he was like, you know what? This could be so great for, for our, you know, all the artists that I know. And bringing, you know, you know, other than, you know, get, it's merged together, build a new way, a new ver you know way of working together in the future of for selling art and having First Nations involved at every level and having us learn from you and we learn from them and you know it, it's just been great. I just think it's you know I'm very excited about it. Oh yeah, Jay was he's the would have, he's the best person for that uh, to have done that and yeah that was great. Like even at the end of the show after when we were ready to leave there on the Kingston Art Fest there. Um, I went up to Jay and I asked him if I could give him and Helena uh, one of my handmade bracelets. <laughs> and he just, he said, you know what? He goes, all I want is a, a big bear hug. And he came up and he gave, <laughs> him, he gave us a big bear hug. And <laughs> that's all he wanted. He didn't want any of my bracelets. He just wanted the hug. Yeah. A big hug. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. yeah so is, is there anything else you wanted to Tell us, Trevor, about your work that I that I didn't didn't talk about that you think is important that I missed. Um, yeah, well, it started as a hobby, and now I'm just I'd like to spend a little more time because while working full time, I was only able to do a couple paintings per year, and uh, yeah, I just it's I'm starting to get better. Like I'm self taught artist, so I've never been, like trained. I just uh, trained myself, and I just loved watching all the like great artists like uh like norvell and benjamin chi chi and uh <clears throat> jackson birdie and uh, actually alan silly boys uh mcma artist from uh, nova scotia there too and uh yeah i just i just love doing native art and craft <laughs> yeah well your work's beautiful and i think it's hard to believe that you know you're I mean, you're, everything you've done is just absolutely beautiful. I love the stories in there and the the meaning. And when you look at them, you you can you you get you're curious. I'm curious. I want to know like what does it mean? There's a lot more going on there than than meets the eye. I could tell that there's a you know a, a deep deep story in the background there that's fueling the imagery. I don't know how to explain it. But. So. That's great. Okay, well, thank you for uh, coming on with us today and sharing uh, your work and your stories and giving us some insights on uh, the, you know, what goes into your work and, and uh, the imagery, because I think it's uh, really nice to, to hear it from you in, instead of imagining what it might be. So. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And uh, thank you for the interview. It's nice yeah. talking to you. You too. And we'll see you we'll see you soon.